Hi, everyone, and welcome to our very first episode of um, 10 to 20 minute Q&A, where we invite people to interview me, just to make the whole thing upside down. And our first uh, person <laughs> is uh, Annette from Sweden, which uh, are very dear to me already. We uh, wrote the book, uh, I am Elisa, and we are working on the second book. And I thought, why not start a new show with somebody who um, are close to me? So, first of all, Annette, welcome. Thanks a lot, Elisa. I'm, I'm sitting here and hoping that you will be here soon because it's snowing today. Remember, we spoke mm -hmm. about, you know, your connection to Sweden, how you feel, yes. feel you know, home here. And uh, yeah. The weather is just perfect for, you know, a snow uh, adventure. So, yeah, so, I, I can't wait. Like uh, all night I've been dreaming about Sweden and, and teeth, apparently. So Sweden and teeth. And then I woke up and I was just listening to this Viking music. And I was uh, like, okay. Oh, that's beautiful. Well. So my so, question, uh, I will start asking you about uh, the North Pole, actually. You know, the uh, Antarctica. And I just want to know, because there's so much talk about it, you know, um, mm -hmm. if you tune into these places, because there's, um, at least in Arctic, it's no people living there. There's no one living there, actually, you know, humans. Mm -hmm. Humans, yes. yes. So what I was like, well, it's pretty full of life, though. <laughs> yeah, so can you please uh, tell us maybe the truth about these places? What is it specifically you want to know? Antarctica. What is hidden behind Antarctica? You know, under, I mean, not behind, under it. What is it there? Well, um, we have a lot of portals. We have them all around the world, but one of the places it has been easiest for us to hide portals and to have this in and out, not only in and out of space, but also in and out for the inner earth, it's um, Antarctica. So a part of what is hidden is energetically and linked to the higher realms and also to aliens, so to speak. But another thing is they do actually have military fetishity, felicity, this word, fetishity, <laughs> uh, these places. It's not untouched. It's not unseen. It is uh, hidden for humanity. Of course, it's hard for humans to to live there because of the cold and etc. But there is life, and there has been life even before we were alive. Mm -hmm. So it is definitely an interesting place and bad joke. But <laughs> if if all these weather changes goes the direction everybody is talking about, well, then eventually we can go to the Antarctic and see what is actually there. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there is uh, something there that wants to help us? Yes and no. <laughs> okay. So uh, an important thing to realize is that when everything is energy, then everything is already available. So what is there that wants to help us is something that is already working with us. The problem with us is that we, we forget to open our eyes and to let in the help which is surrounding us at all point of time. Um, it's always a hard question to answer because there's so much going on at the same time. And some of the energies which are using the entering and going out portals um, on that place, he, um, do you definitely want to help us, but do you also just want to help themselves? I do see a lot of neutral beings uh, floating around not so much force in power or etc. Thanks. Another place who is very, very beautiful and dear to me, and I would love to, I know, for us to go there, it's called Åreskutan. It's a beautiful mountain very close by. And it's, the rumor is, or the, the, the story about it is that it's, it's a gateway down to, to uh, the inner earth. What can you feel about that? As we said before, we do have a lot of entrance to the inner earth, but as it has not been a place where we wanted humans, 
it has not been a place that has been visible for humans to see or to enter. We do, we have invited a few ones down. I think one or two of them are documented, but for people to open their eyes to the world beneath the world, within the world, uh, a lot of people have not been ready for it yet. As I do see it, and to answer your exact question, if we have been using that gateway, um, yes, partly, but no, not all the way to the enter. Okay. But a few layers down. Okay, okay, I understand. Is there any specific message that you would like to get, like to give from the, the inner earth uh, to humanity right now in the situation we are in? So we as beings are super curious. We're super curious of how you run your life <laughs> and what may, what's your drive. We're curious about the things that we do not understand. The system that is running within us and the way that we navigate in life is so far from the way that you navigate in life. The whole thing about ego and violence on the level that it's being played out on earth is not something that figurates within our existence. So for us to see humans, we find it fascinating for better and for worse. If I look at two uh, how we perceive life, what we stand for is harmony. Mm. What we stand for is internal flow and to be one with whatever it is. The way we communicate is telepathetic more than it is with words. Yes. So when Elisa allowed me to see through her eyes, what I do is I telepathetic enter the space and I look out and, and I feel everything which is unset, but with it's showing within the emotion. Mm. Um, yeah, so when they look through my eyes, what I understand is that <laughs> that they don't understand, you see. So <laughs> it, it's like a child who are experienced in a world so far from their reality, yet they have a bit of bigger understanding of conscious than we have. They are neutral mm -hmm. in the duality that we are fighting. They are not here to do one thing or another. They are simply curious and they want to keep having the peace uh, at their home. Another question that comes to my heart is uh, what, what happens on, you know, on the sur surface on Earth? Does it affect them down there? You know? Because I can feel it's a precious world down there and a lot is going on up here in our you know, part of Gaia. Is yes and no. So they they are pretty um, isolated from the world which is moving uh, with us. On the other hand, everything is part of the whole, right? So mm -hmm. it will be very wrong to say that they're not influenced. If I ask them or one of them or the one who likes to speak for me, or if that is all of them at once, but <laughs> uh, they don't feel influenced um, to the degree that we think they are mm -hmm. because for them they will survive unless that the whole earth goes like you know yeah, yeah. but they are interested in the harmony once again and if <laughs> if we are not nursing our authenticity and if we are not nurturing Gaia the harmony is, is disharmonized and for them that creates a more sour environment, which will affect their earth, which will affect the energy of which would flow down to their, mm. or in, it's not down, but into their level of um, existence area. Mm. Another question that comes to my heart is, I've had uh, some you know, encounters with uh, uh, what we call in Swedish, vesen, or um, like, um, uh, beings that are living in the nature, different kinds of beings. And the information that I get is that we are very they are very connected with us. Uh, mm -hmm. The way we live here will affect them a lot. So mm -hmm. um, my question is, uh, how can we help these beings? You know what I mean when I say being, they're connected to the trees, they're connected to, to plants. Uh, there are different, of course, big variety of species so how can how can how would they they want to address humanity what can we do to harmonize 
the relationship. Funny, the funny thing is that what we need to do is become conscious and aware. What we need to be to do is to understand that everything is part of the whole, that everything is alive, that no matter which choices we make, it does influence our surroundings. Um, so it is for people and humanity to become more conscious about the life that flows in everything there is. And more than being locked up by the business of everyday life. But as we are in this period with a lot of changes, it's hard for humanity to look beside the fear or their everyday life. They are basically in fight and flight. When, baby, when babies, when humans <laughs> are in fight or flight, uh, it's hard for them to look outside of the box. Mm. When I look into the energies with the surrounding, the plants and the trees and um, all they want to do is to blossom, it's to follow the seasons, it's to um, be part of the whole, it's to follow this circle of life of which we all agreed upon being a part of when we entered Earth. Um, they don't perceive fear the same way that we do or hardship the same way that we do, but they do feel energy. So when we feel drained and our our world is going in minus with too much resistance and et cetera, it is to, when you see a flower and you forget to water it. Mm -hmm. So the same way that the flower feel when you don't water it is the same way that these spirits around the flower feels when you're not paying attention to that. They keep saying that you are, you are you're asking the wrong questions. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what we mean about that is for us to focus on all the beauty in the world, for us to focus on all the external, we need to go in t into ourselves. Because in this time, um, there is so much chaos. And if we don't fix what is within, there is no way we can link to the truth of what is surrounding us. We need to be the embodiment of the authentic self that we're here to represent because the energy we shine out is the energy that we will reflect into the world. And in this time, we need to reflect a bunch of trust <laughs> and authenticity. Um, so we love to answer all your questions, but the universe will keep poking me in the back being like, Tell her it's about looking inside. Tell her it's about looking inside. That was and I'm like, yes. <laughs> but she's asking cool questions. <laughs> no, it was actually my, my next question, you know, to round up. Because I think what you just said is so important in the time that we are living in right now. Mm -hmm. And people are struggling. You know what I mean? It's, it's, yes. it's, tough. it's really tough out there. And um, to be authentic or, you know, to open our hearts that's would make a big difference yes and to dare to listen to what we truly feel because there's so much information surrounding us mm -hmm. and to not be a judge of what is right and what is wrong then let's just say there's a lot and it, it, it's driving different directions um pushing different outcomes and if we haven't learned how to look inside of ourselves and feel what feels right within us we just follow something and in order of creating a new world reality, which we are in, in the middle of, um, it is so important that we link to what feels true within our essence. Because or else we create a world reality that we created subconsciously and not in the conscious. Um, yeah, so a lot of my focus obviously, as I have to reflect the whole universe at once, he <laughs> is on our tendency at the moment with whatever that means, good, bad, up, down, it doesn't matter. Like humanity, people, we need to allow ourselves to go through whatever we're feeling. And it doesn't matter if, it, if it's pain or if it's resentment or if, if it's grief. It is there for a reason. And if we don't allow it to come to the surface, it will keep staying a part of us. So allow it to show so it can flow. That's basically, uh, yeah. It was so beautiful. On the list. 
what you just wrote. They can lock down everything around us, but we we will ha- we will uh, just open our hearts more. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would like to add that to be authentic and you know to train ourselves to feel what's right or wrong, whatever yes. side you're on. So that's beautiful. So just as to end this, how are you today, Lisa? You know what are you doing? What are you going? You know how what, you know I know you are in Budapest. You're back in Budapest. Mm-hmm. Just about your days. What's going on around you? Ooh. Well, my days is the whole orphanity thingy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm going through uh, tons of feelings and emotions. And this morning started with this anger outburst. It was amazing. I don't know. I got pissed over nothing. I dropped something on the floor and I was like, Arr. so I was like, what? What am I angry about? So I just allowed it. I went to the gym and I went absolutely local on some uh, boxing bags for two hours. And then I was like, hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Walked home. <laughs> yeah, I was like, just let it show so it can flow, right? So I, I walked home and... Uh, and um, every like the sun goes down at four, so I have this thing where I really I, I just want to catch a few hours of nature before sunset because when the sun is down here, it's pitch dark. Yeah. And so my plan is to go out for a few hours, and then I have to make a few bracelets for uh, for an order of today. Um. So that's it. And how I'm doing, and it's it's a it's a roller coaster, definitely. It's like I mean, being me, who feels everything at once, <laughs> but I used to it because I have never tried anything else. It can be quite chaotic sometimes because the world right now is on on fire for some people, and um, and it it does influence me from time to time. I, I get struck by these waves of, of fear or struck by these waves of, of anger. <laughs> uh, and, and then I go run, I go back to the heart, I go back to this whole place of knowing that in this very moment, we are okay. In this very moment, everything is beautiful. In this very moment, I can breathe. I'm not hungry. I'm not really that cold, you know, <laughs> so... It's to to um, remind me myself to come back into the present moment every time I'm struck by a wave of whatever, and uh, yeah, so that and um, <laughs> that's all. Awesome. Just accepting it, accepting all the feelings, accepting the flow, accepting that creation i am are not supposed to sit on some mountain top and be like oh, i'm loving life and nothing else I'm, i am part of everything right like all of us and uh, yeah that's, we just have to live it i feel that that's also very good advice because a lot of people are you know even if they're not you know one with everything they're still very affected about everything around them so just mm-hmm. to be in the moment and to accept whatever comes, that's a very good advice, I feel, for, for me and for people around me because there's not, not so much we can do about the current situation else than taking care of our own feelings. Being true to ourselves. Yeah. Yes, very important. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that above all, being true to ourselves and... And let the storm ride off, you know. And what do I see with my own two eyes? Not what do I hear or what am I told or what is my fear saying? Because fear drives you woo, around the planet. But what am I actually seeing with my two own eyes? What am I experiencing in this world reality, uh, in this now? And, and let that be the guide. Because fear can take us far from from reality and yet from that we create the next reality right so back to the present moment being authentic that's the main well that's a good good thing to start the day with you know feeling how am i today what i feel what is my own thought so Mm -hmm. 
that is so beautiful and so important. Well, I think that our time is get you know getting is up. up. <laughs> yeah. I think you're right. <laughs> beautiful to see you. I miss you a lot. Oh, mm. Likewise, I'm looking forward to the Sweden experience. Well, it, and apparently Sweden is looking forward as well. They're like knocking on my head. I was like, yes, I will come home to Sweden. <laughs> we can't wait. We can't oh. wait. So lots of love. And to everyone who listens, greetings from Sweden. Yay. And thank you so much for being part of our first episode. And for everybody else, thank you for listening. And I'm going to say these things you have to say. Hit the subscribe button in the bottom or the like button and please leave a comment <laughs> if there's something you would like to add or wants us to know. Um, and if you would like to be one of the interviewers, no matter where you are in the world, send us an email and we will make it possible. So yeah, thank you so much and I'm excited about hearing what you thought about it. Doo -doo, namaste!